This is an MWA, a maintenance work area. We have two of those. There is this one on the starboard wall of the Note 2, and then there is one on the opposite wall over there. Uh, we use MWAs typically to do complex science or uh, maintenance work where you know it's, it's, it's lengthy, it's complex, we want a nice work environment, we want to be able to secure this equipment, we want nothing to be floating away. Uh, this is the stored position of, of the MWA. It's tucked against the wall, so it's out of the way. If we have to work on it, probably we want to deploy it to, to raise it up to a more comfortable angle. You could secure it, for example, here. Most likely, you would want to bring it up a little bit, so it's, it's more like a table. And then let's say I have a piece of equipment I want to work on and I want to secure it here. Uh, one option is bungees, so I would... Uh, First of all, attach rings like this one, where, where I find them handy, for example, up here. And then a second one over there, for example. And then a bungee between the two. And then I could secure, for example, this if I had to do some work on it. We also use this general area to keep stuff that we use all the time. Uh, we want it handy, we don't want to have it to, to put it away all the time. Uh, for example, Sharpies, stopwatch, flashlights, Leatherman tool, clips, Velcro tabs. Uh, Velcro is very important when stuff floats. Um, so if you find something that doesn't have Velcro, you can quickly put a Velcro tab on it and then it's easy to, to attach to a wall or the ceiling or the floor. Ray coat. Um, we also keep a tool, a couple of tools actually, like this one with the 5.30 second socket and that's because we use them all the time. This is the type of socket that is used to remove the fasteners that secure the, that secures the front panels of our racks and that's because a lot of time there is stowage behind the front panels and so we need to access the volume behind or occasionally because we have to do some work on the equipment that's, uh, that's back there. When you're done, of course, you want to restore it so that it's not in your way or in the way of your crewmates. one of two identical robotic workstations here on ISS. The other one is in the cupola. This is typically our backup workstation. From a robotic workstation, of course, you can fly the arm, which means that you can um, operate and control the SSRMS, the big robotic arm that is outside the station. We use it, for example, to capture visiting vehicles that bring us cargo, or to support extravehicular activities, or sometimes even to move uh, a big thing, like an entire module of the space station from one location to another. Recently, we used the arm to move uh, PMM. Sometimes we fly it manually, especially for um, support of extravehicular activities or um, track and capture. And in, uh, in this case, we use the hand controllers. Uh, this is the translational hand controller. So x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And this is our rotational hand controller. Pitch, roll, and yaw. Of course, I can move the hand controller so nothing happens right now because, as you can see here on the control page of the SSRMS, the arm is off. To give us situational awareness of what's going on outside, we have cameras. And we can route several cameras that are outside um, of the space station, mainly on the truss, uh, to any one of these three monitors. Of course, now they're, they're off. And uh, to do camera routing, zooming in, zooming out, panning, tilting, we use this uh, control panel. Um, it, it's also, it also contains a lot of controls for the arm itself. Um, for example, very important, the safety switch. If something is happening that is not supposed to, you can save the arm and everything's done.
see the little, um, you might have noticed the little moon on the outside. This is our orbital outhouse right here. And of course, it serves for two functions. Number two, right here, I'll show you. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim. And you can be ready to make sure things get let go the right direction. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. And that's, of course, for number two. And this guy right here is for number one. So they're sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both, by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. I might add, it's color-coded, so you really don't get it mixed up, which is nice. This is yellow for number one. And, uh, also, there's a selection of paper. People always ask about toilet paper. What do you do with toilet paper? What kind of toilet paper do you have? We have gloves, just because sometimes it does get messy. We have some Russian wipes, which are a little bit coarse if you like the coarse type of toilet paper. We have some nice tissues, which are nice and soft if you like soft toilet paper. We have huggies, um, just for any cleanup. You know, we were all babies once, and this sort of helps. And then as things get really out of control, we have uh, disinfectant wipes, just to make sure we clean up here. Because, you know, just like the water I showed you, the number one stuff can sort of go all over the place if you don't aim correctly. And did I mention, both of these have a little bit of suction, so they should keep things going in the right direction. But, um, like I said, sometimes things get a little out of control if you are out of control.